Good morning, everyone. I'm here with my dog, Gunner. We're at the Geek Pub this morning. I've got the long hair. Uh, we're growing it out. Gunner, come on, buddy. We're on camera. Gotta ham it up for the camera. There he is. And we're matching, matching gray beards. Gunner, Gunner, look. Oh, look at that. Matching gray beards. Anyway, growing out the hair for a Halloween costume. But I'm here at the Geek Pub. I'm going to start working on a future project uh so let's go in take a peek at it see what it looks like well here we are we're in the pub gunner i don't know if you can see him moving around there but uh let me show you what we're going to start working on today uh it is this tiger heli now come on who doesn't love tiger heli well i can tell you i'm sure somebody loves tiger heli tiger heli a 1985 rom star game and i believe this was mostly a kit game i could be wrong i'm wrong a lot but uh if it isn't always a kit game this particular one was why do i know that well to the discerning arcade eye maybe i love that side art um there this is a different game and this is going to go back to being that game i promise can anybody guess what it was? This is kind of a giveaway here. Uh, also, this uh, Rotterdam joystick. Rotting Dam, Rotterdam. Can't remember the exact words there. But the profile of the cabinet may give away what it is or what it was. This. Oh, man, look at that. You can almost see a little eye there. This was Cubert. Believe it or not, at one point, this was Cubert. Now, this is, uh, we're gonna fix this this morning just to see if we can get this thing to light up. And we're gonna try to, over the next, I don't know, several months, maybe. Uh, it could be sooner, could be later, not sure. Don't know if the monitor works, don't know if anything works in this. But we're gonna try to get this thing back to Cubert. It'd be a shame to get rid of this great side art. <laughs> So a lot of people, like, they'll look at my games in the Electric Starship and think, good Lord, they're in such great condition. But this is a, this is how a lot of them start. They just look like just complete, uh, you know, road rash, right? Like, this has just been through the, you know, it's been through the ringer. But the good news is it's in good shape. I know you're thinking, like, what, Mike, you're insane. This is not good shape. This here, believe it or not, is in good shape. You got a lot of good bones here. I mean, there's not a lot of holes drilled in it. There's no big, giant mess of water damage. It's sitting up off the ground. I don't ne necessarily how, but it isn't, you know, all flatted out on the ground. This has the original Hubert joystick. Um, there's some extra holes here. These are easy fillable holes, I believe. We'll see when we get into this control panel. I'm a little spooked by this action here. I don't know what's going on exactly. Uh, but this metal stuff here is a little kooky. But I'll fill those holes and then get it back to... And the good thing is the orientation actually hasn't been changed on the Kubert joystick. So that's a big plus, guys. I don't know if y'all know about that. I've already bought some artwork for it. Um... We're going to put the cussing marquee on it. If you don't know, it's got the big word bubble. Uh, so that'll be really, really cool. It's nice that this is still intact. This metal part bar or the metal marquee bracket here. It kind of rests down in a wooden slot there. Uh, don't know much about the monitor. If it lights up or kind of burn ends on it. There's a lot of dust on it. So, so we don't know. We might have to replace the monitor, but... I can see there's a plastic monitor bezel in there that's actually pretty tough to get. I've already got a piece of Cubert glass uh, in there or acrylic, I don't know which one I got. I got the artwork for down here uh, so we can clean that up and put Cubert there. So all in all, I think it's gonna be a really fun project. So to be continued, let's see how lucky we get putting this together. Okay, I got it turned around here. Let's open it up for the first time and see what is in here. Got some nice latch here. There's no screw holding it. Um, appears to be a K4900. This one's a 4951. It's a 19 inch monitor. 
So that's uh, good. This is a good monitor. Uh, I love to work on the old Wells Gardner monitors. Looks like we have an intact um, Tiger Heli board. So, you know, maybe we give this thing power this morning and it'll fire right up. What we got down here going on with the power? Uh, some weird stuff. This is a big ass switching power supply. It's just kind of resting at the bottom here. And there's a power brick behind it. I don't know how any of this is wired up. Um, what else we got here? Oh. GTE Telephone Operations. Covering up the name here. I don't know if I got it on there or not, but this looks old. Old, old, old. Hmm. Weird. GTE. I ain't even heard of GTE in a long time. There's a mirror in here and something else. What's this? We got a. Oh my God, what is this? Supermax. This is a lockbox. Like for you put a keep keys in. There's nothing in it. Maybe. Well, that's fun. What else is in here? <laughs> keep digging. Got a mirror. That's fun. What else we got? I'm gonna get bit by something horrible, I'm sure. Hey, got a scratcher. I don't know that we won. Darn, I wonder what year that scratcher's from. It looks old. The rats ate on it. Uh, there's some vinyl art there. Ooh, what is it? Let's look. Discovery. Wow. What do we got here? Um, the fear is here. He's whatever scares you most. Uh, it's an old movie. I don't remember from when, but uh, it's a window cling. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, a piece of plastic. Looks like off of a coin slot. Some screws, some other junk. Yeah, not a lot of cool stuff. Right there where those holes are, that's where the knocker goes for Qbert. It's your volume and some other testings and whatnot. Uh, yeah, this thing looks super freaking roasted, man. It's all open and everything. We're gonna put a power cord on this and just light her up and see what happens here. Oh, goodness. I know some instructions for the monitor maybe right here. Pretty fun. Well, let's look inside. So we cleaned out some of the stuff that's in there. There's still a little bit of junk in there, but a lot of weird stuff going on. So I went ahead and just used some wire nuts just to see if you get any life out of this thing. Um, but the wiring in here is dangerous. <laughs> I mean, nothing is attached to the wall or anything. Uh, it's pretty rough. Uh, I don't know. This definitely wasn't the way to go here. I'm probably going to end up gutting this whole cabinet. I don't love this situation here. Uh, this is really sketchy. Oh my god, they just like wired it right onto the plug. And then the plug is, I'm guessing, in here. Let's see if it's, yeah, it's in enough. Uh, so this is a tough, tough mess here. So I'm going to end up taking out that power brick, that power supply. I'm going to you know, keep this harness with Tiger Heli in case Tiger Heli works, because this is the harness for it. It's not JAMA, it's some uh, different form there. It's like a 22, 44 pin connector, you know, on both sides. I don't know if I'm right on that, I apologize. If I'm lying again, which is common, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I just don't like this wiring setup because I don't know what's what. Um, I'll be able to figure it out, but I'm going to have to get into this line here. And what I'm going to end up doing is dropping in one of these, um, power bricks like this, because this is great. You know, I know, I know, what, I know where everything is. I know what's going on here. So we'll end up putting in a power brick like that with a JAMA connection. And then I'll end up getting a, uh, Milestar board from Arcade Shop. It's an FPGA board that'll run Qbert, Qbert Cubes, Qbert Faster, Harder, More Challenging, and Mellow Yellow Qbert. But uh, anyway, we gotta get to gutting this thing because this isn't gonna work. This is truly remarkable. So 
So yeah, it's gonna be tough to do with one hand, but looks like they just uh, didn't just no solder, no nothing, just pronged it right in there. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Hold on a second here. Swap over to my other hand. Yeah, these are just. Uh, Let's see what it would be like to be one-handed. Not very fun, yeah. Look at that. Just taped it right on. Just prong, prong to prong right there. Pretty cool. Okay. I've just taken off the joystick here. So there is some sort of weird mounting. So I don't know that this is the Cubert joystick now that I'm looking at it. I don't know what mounting this is. This is kind of strange looking to me. It looks like it has the same joystick, but if you can see these mounting holes, this thing's supposed to be mounted a different direction. So maybe they've taken it out and I just need to rotate it. These got to come out. Um, these are where that's originally got a bend here that we'll have to get out of there, but well, it's progress. Okay, so we've taken off the control panel here. And now we can see in there, it's a nightmare. And you can see the really dirty. Wow, it's super, super dirty. Anyway, we took off the glass, it's shot, but we do have another piece of glass for Cubert. And then I took the control panel apart here. You can see this classic Romstar CPO. I'm gonna have to peel all that off. I did kind of hammer out this uh, bent piece over here. I'm hoping we can use this joystick. I think this is the right joystick, but you know, I've been wrong a lot in my life, so it could be, couldn't be, who knows? Uh, but anyway, we got rid of some of this junk. Now let's see where we get. Okay, so knock some dust off there. You can tell this used to be Cubert. Lots of Cubert burn in. The Tiger Heli burn in is also on there. You can see where it says Tiger Heli. Um, but the Q, it was like Cubert, it looks like a little longer, but that's okay. That doesn't mean this monitor's bad. It's just got a little burn in on the shadow mask. And during, uh, the great thing about Cubert is, I mean, it'll fill up that, uh, little pyramid pattern and, uh, this other stuff that's out here in the sides, it's going to be all black. So I'm not going to see it too much. Uh, so just again, dusted it off and it was really, really, really gross underneath the, that's underneath the glass so kind of fun uh, or the over the bezel glass and i saw something fun up here and gosh i just hate to take this off it says thomas is the best thomas wherever you are you are the best but uh if you did this to this game i am also sad and angry at you <laughs> all right with this we should be pulling off the last bit of old sidearm and fail <laughs> let's try that again with this we should be pulling off the last bit of old side art and complete well that doesn't tell you it was a cubert nothing will well all right look at that we are empty inside actually that's uh cleaned as well <laughs> Not like super, I wouldn't eat off of it or anything, but uh, we got a nice uh, workspace in there to add a little something to it. Pretty excited. Also, obviously you've seen this. We got that one piece of art off. It was still hidden under the paint. This one, there's nothing under there. You can see the silhouette of where it used to be, but I guess they got it all off before they painted this fella right here, who is amazing and then i got a little bit more to go on here this had some some of the rough art on it still but i got some goo gone and get some of that off some, still some sticky spots especially right there but uh then we'll have that down to the to the black get this thing back so here we are with the control panel for future cubert and you see the old ROM star there. And here's all the stuff come off. I put some clean strip on there. I'm having to use this too to kind of get in. I'll show you. So I can kind of give you an idea. Uh, some of this is easier to pull off than other parts, but uh, 
it's just a combination of both. You know, some of this I was able to pull off pretty easy. Some of it had to get underneath, which we'll sand all this down so I don't have these little marks or anything when we put the new CPO on. But uh, there's a little update. Okay, so now here we're day one progress. Uh, you know, we got this piece cleaned up really nice for the lower marquee. That's gonna look good. Uh, we got this almost all stripped down. Talked to Greg just now. We're gonna fill in some holes here, here. These holes aren't supposed to be there. Those aren't, and those aren't. Just these two bolt holes, one player, two player, and joystick. Uh, so good start. Good start getting this old ugly monster back. Uh, hopefully next time we see this, we get the old Kubert uh, side art right there. At least we know it's right where it goes, right? <laughs> so we'll have to get it all painted up. And uh, I don't know, I kind of want to keep uh, Thomas is the best. I may uh, work around that somehow just to keep that on there because it's funny. But uh, anyway, see you next time, Gunner. Gunner! There he is. So I started sanding already, and the other side's actually done, but this side had this magnificent art. And I've probably documented it before, but before it goes away, I wanted to see it one more time. Also, we have installed a nice new light fixture in there, and it looks really great with the new marquee, but you can't see that yet. We're gonna uh, put this thing together first or get it all nice and pretty before we start putting artwork on. I just wanted to see it because it looked cool. So anyway, to we continue. Okay, well, let's see what we did. We put some new feet on there. The back didn't have any feet at all, so it needed some plates. They're a little oversized, but they fit and they're sturdy. Uh, so this thing should sit up right, which is really cool. These are the old ones. Uh, you know, it was hard to move around here. And this is, you know, these bottom, they just kind of get worn out. See that kind of, wah, and they make this horrible screechy noise you know so those promptly can go gunner are you guarding a trash can buddy that's where these are going that's my old feet lieutenant dan you got new legs that's what i'm talking about all right so this is uh the artwork is gone y'all there was definitely cubert under there he's in there uh the good part about this is you know we ain't got a whole lot to go on this so we've got it all wired up and everything and now it's just about getting it all painted uh, i am gonna touch up the front obviously there's some it's a little nasty but the sides are ready to prime for paint so we'll see what we get next okay. time now we got it sitting upright gunner is promptly set on the blanket i had it laying on and uh yeah now you can see both sides so it's starting to look a little better. No more custom artwork. Sorry, folks. Hey, look, it's like the monitor's playing Hubert by itself. Well, we're back in the pub today, and I've sanded a little bit down here. I need to do maybe a little bondo on those holes. I'm not sure. I may leave them. Just trying to think what I want to do next on this guy. The light's been installed. We've got this sanded down there. Yeah, I do need to get a little primer coat on that before we go get the yellow for it, but that's that. Taking off the coin door, we'll go over here. There's Gunner, looking on. Hey, buddy. So we took off the coin door. It's pretty uh, crusty, rusty. I've been sitting here cleaning it with that rag right there. And uh, yeah, we got a little bit ways to go on it. We're going to maybe disassemble, maybe tape off, I don't know. Also, and I didn't get, I wish I'd gotten a better shot of this when it came back, but. This is the uh, control panel. Our buddy Greg welded up those holes that we didn't need, which is really nice. And uh, I put a little Bondo on some of the cracks in them. And, uh, so we should, uh, it's dry now. I just gotta sand it off. My gloves are looking creepy. Anyway, so that's the progress for now. I'm gonna sand that, paint that, and paint that and we'll see where we get to okay so i've started painting it yellow it's about to rain on me but i wanted to show a little progress on that cubert see if we can't get it looking good i'm gonna have a few coats of this okay uh so it's been a few months probably since i've worked on the cubert uh i've had some painting mishaps so <laughs> i used uh, enamel spray paint, but because it was windy, the dry fall was causing it to dry really quickly, so it came out blotchy. 
Then I went and got some roll on enamel and started, I rolled it on. And before I knew it, uh, the paint guy at the store had given me the wrong paint. So then I had to sand that back down. So anyway, this Cuber cabinet's gonna have a nice multi coat of uh, paint on it. <laughs> so I'm gonna roll the rest here. Uh, Bondo and patch some holes. Uh, and now I'm just cutting in the edging here uh, to make it look a little nicer. I'm trying to let some of this uh, dust settle, but uh, anyway, kind of neat. So we'll see what we get done with today. I'd like to get at least most of the black part painted today if possible. So we'll see how it goes. We are back. We are back here at the Geek Pub. So um, Hubert, we got a second coat of yellow on and luckily I am done painting. I am so tired of painting and sanding and working on this thing, so I am really glad we're past that point. The next part is putting on the artwork, hooking up the controls, putting the marquee on, all the fun things you want to do when you're restoring an arcade. Uh, as you can see, it's come a long way, and man, it is so bright yellow. I love it. Uh, it looks really good. I've done all the blacks already, too. Um, it's hard to see because there's so much stuff in here. Uh, and this is just all the games that are being worked on and uh you know just a really really cool if you if you're seeing this video and you hadn't so this place is really filled up since i uh, started working on this cubert it kind of got pushed to the back and so it's really really nice to see uh this one come along it's early on a saturday before the starship opens i'll show you some of the stuff that we're gonna put on uh i only this donkey kong here looking nice my dog being so good over there sitting on the floor like a rock. Oh, not so much anymore. So in here, in the kitchen, all places, uh, we have some uh, metal pieces to, there's Cubert's coin door. There's the uh, top rail, the marquee rail and screws. And then up there is the artwork just ready to go on. Uh, I'm so excited to finally finally get to that so anyway um i hope you're enjoying this so far we're about to get to the good stuff thank god Woo -woo. well this is going to be a fun day because we get to add all this stuff to our cubic cabinet including a coin door that is not here it's got the original joystick with it which i'm excited about um i do have a rebuild kit for it but i've actually want to play with it and see i might save that rebuild kit for a better day because it seems to be working really well um and uh not sure if that's a rotting damn stick or a rotterdam stick or not it looks like one but i don't i haven't opened our cubert in a long time so or done any any internet research this one was made in australia but uh, it certainly looks like the cubert joystick uh, from the top so it's the one that's going to go back on it <clears throat> But anyway, I thought this stuff's really cool. We're gonna get the side art today, get that little front art, put our control panel on that we've had to redo. Uh, we have our bezel and also our marquee and uh, you know, buttons. We'll have to find some buttons in the back that'll work, but uh, I'm pretty excited. Well, first things first, I'm gonna do T-molding. Now, usually I would do T-molding after side art but none of the side art bleeds over or it comes over the edge, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the team molded on, see how I like the look of that. Uh, so here's a little before, and boom, team molding. All right, I mean, that just makes it look 100% better already. Look at that. Gotta love what team molding can do to an arcade cab. Pretty neat. Extreme close up. All right, I'm applying the side art now. You see the top part's already applied. I still got to peel off this bottom, but it's coming out really good. You know, I think it looks really sharp. I'm stuck in the little hallway here. We don't have a whole lot of room to work. Um, yellow's really match really well, I think. Get kind of a weird glare there, but yeah, really nice. Uh, exciting. <laughs> okay, we're doing the other side now. You can look at our trusty little squeegee here. And we're just uh, trying to make sure there's no air bubbles. And, uh, sometimes I use the wet method. Now this, I just sprayed the outside just because it's medallion art. And it takes a little longer to dry when you use the wet method of spraying the 
paint beforehand, but I do use the spray to clean the paint beforehand to get all the stuff out from under. But now we're just, you know, applying the art. I like, I wish that Cupid's art was mirrored because it looks different on each side just because of the, um, the way Cubert and Coily are faces are pointing. They're pointing backwards on the left side of the artwork here. Um, good news is you can't put it on backwards, <laughs> but uh, it's a little bit of a pain because the measurements are a little different because the bubble sticks out different here and there. And so you're just trying to measure the lines to see that you're pretty close tolerances. See his head's way closer here, but on the other side his head's over here because the artwork's flipped around. But uh, anyway, it's fine. It looks gonna look great. Well, there you go, side art is applied. So it is looking sharp. I cleaned this monitor and the bezel and put it back in. Those little bezels, if you don't have those, they're really tough to find. You've got leave bezel. Um, here's the side art from the other side. I think this is gonna be a really pretty game. A little front art on there. And the cooling door, I put some locks on, but I'm about to put on the bezel the out exterior bezel with the plexi there, and then also the marquee, and uh, maybe put locks on, I'll be done for the day. And we'll continue on with this, it's fantastic. Oh my gosh, how cool. Brand new Cubert bezel, digging it. Looks really good, uh, Cubert. These guys, I don't remember. It's cool dude with the shades. Coily, I do remember, I forget this other guy. The names are on the, uh, gonna be on the control panel, so we'll see. You can almost play it with the shadow mask. <laughs> it's so burned in. So we're plugged in. Um, you can see where, uh, yeah, it's funny, you know, so far, I've done so many different things on this cabinet, and it's been so long working on it, I forgot I already did the uh, new power block in there, which will certainly show up in this video. <laughs> Um, lights are working. Can't tell if the monitor's working, but I'm gonna put this marquee in. That is the super cool cussing marquee. I'm gonna put the, I'll do this with one hand, but we're gonna try. All right, pause for a second here. All right, so now we got the marquee on. The lower marquee, if you will, coin doors, bezels. Uh, I got my little tag up here that says Thomas is the best. We're gonna leave that fun little piece of history on here. Oh yeah, see? How fun is that? So Thomas, when you played this game and, or maybe someone else knew you were the best, I don't know, but uh, we think you still are, so we're gonna Keep that little piece of arcade history on it. If I can get that thing off. There we go. I hit it in tape while I painted it, so. Look at that. You're still the best, buddy. <laughs> All right, so we got the board hooked up and the joystick all in. These are not the buttons you're gonna go on it, but it's the only least switch buttons I had right here, right away. A um, couple problems. Obviously the monitor is at a funky angle here. Um, so I'm gonna recap it to go through. There's a few things online that talk about this angle. You can get the angle to go away, but the, uh, what would be horizontal, even though this is vertical, it's the monitor sideways. Um, the, you can get it to go away, but you're missing part of the screen and there's like this section that's supposed to be here. It's kind of rolled up and you start seeing some of it at the bottom. So work on that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, there's a little bit of a gate issue. This has a different gate. So you can sometimes see it when you're trying to play it. I'll try to play this at the same time. So obviously I have everything pointing the right direction. You see how I tried to go up and I kind of hit that first? It, it lets you do that, which it shouldn't. So here we've got some control there. I was going 
lucky on that. See, that kind of jumped up when I meant to jump down. So, other than that, though, color's really good, and uh, it's looking sharp. So, a few more little tweaks, and we'll be all finished up. Uh, can't see it. Off there. I'm even tilting it. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do a cap kit on Cuber. There's one right from it. Where's that on the camera there? Right there, 351, if you see it upside down. Anyway, I'm in the middle of doing a cat kim in Cuba. I don't know that that's the problem, but uh, anyway, so we get some solder right there. Can't really do it on camera, but you can kind of see I'm in the middle of it right now. So let's see if this helps a little, and if not, we have, there's a little something we can do here by changing out this capacitor here. It talks about it on here that may, um, help. This is a K4900 chassis. So we'll see how it looks. And I'm all finished up. Okay, we're all recapped up. We got everything put in. Um, still having some of the same issue, but Mike reminded me that if you just take the positive sink out of this one plug that I had done months ago and totally forgot about and just add it over there to the negative sink or vice versa, maybe get that backwards that that should clear up the problem. We looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, duh. So anyway, Easy peasy, plus everything's capped and nice and new and um, yeah. So thank God he was here because I would have just banged my head against the wall for another, you know, probably 30 minutes to an hour until I figured it out too, so or longer. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so we got it running on the old J-Rock through the JAMA, new plugs and all that. And this is what she looks like. Hold on, I'm gonna close this back door because letting light in in the back. Let's check it out. It looks good. Look at that. You can see the cubert burn in the blue. So that's what it was originally, which is so fun. I love that this uh, is actually picking that up pretty good. But last two things I gotta do is I gotta get the right, right, these are red solid buttons. You're supposed to have those translucent, kind of clear looking red buttons there. And then, but look at the screen, it looks really good. Nice and can't ever get a good picture, but I promise you, it looks really, really oh. nice. Oh, I can I see it? Pretty awesome. I'm excited. Pretty cool looking. Yeah, if you put this in, you can really see the good color on it. You gotta get a little uh, regular light in there. Pretty cool. Let's make Cuba for a second. See how good. Good thing is, Cubert's one handed. Now, this stick needs a gate change on it because I'll notice sometimes I, if I'm not very deliberate with my directions. I'm playing this through the screen, so. See? <laughs> it's pushing down and not deliberate enough there. knocker in. Dang it, there's more to this video. I gotta put the knocker in. Oh my gosh, there's one I didn't get to there. Let's get a cubert win here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alright, so that looking good. Screen's good. So this is what I was talking about. This gate is open. So when you yeah, hit some in. of these directions, oh, I'm shooting a video. You shoot, you're with this gate open like this, you can hit two directions at the same time. See, you don't want that. You want Cubert just going those directions without accidentally getting in a corner. So I'm gonna just unscrew these and move it and should fix that problem. And just like that, slid that one over, this one here. See, now you can't uh, get in that middle ground. You can only pick one or the other, so that should keep Cubert from going the wrong direction there, which would be nice. It'll just slide into the right place. Uh, so yeah, that easy fix. Hello there, Gunner. Hello there, Cubert. All right, so we're going to talk about things today. Things being mistakes. And with this cabinet, I've made a lot of them. <laughs> so uh, one not to not own up to my mistakes. Let's talk about some of them. So first things first, uh, when you're working on Cubert and you're working with the difference of a 
original board set or a J-Rock and you're trying to wire up a knocker, they actually offer two different knockers. So let's look at that. So if you're going with a J-Rock, you want a 12 volt knocker and the 12 volt knocker is A5194, okay? The 30 volt knocker is A5195 and I thought I had it back here, but I don't see it. Let's go exploring to see if we can find this knocker hiding somewhere. But anyway, so that was the first uh, mistake is we just ordered the wrong knocker. And the funny thing is I've done this exact Cubert before at the Electric Starship and I did the same thing on that. I don't know where he put that knocker. That's so crazy. Anyway, I've already done this. So I don't know why we just ordered the wrong knocker, but I have the right one in my hand right now. So we're gonna wire that in today. The other mistake I made uh, has to do with the joystick. So we're going to talk about that next. Okay, so for the record, 5195 authentic Kubert cabinet knocker, 30 volts. 5194, just that difference there. That's the 12 volt knocker for a J-Rock board. So there you go. That's your little FPGA J-Rock that needs a... Uh, different voltage knocker there. So anyway, uh, just cleaning some stuff up so y'all don't get confused if y'all are doing this same kind of restore one day. Uh, now you know. So earlier in the video, when we were talking about this joystick here, I was saying Rotterdam, Rottingdam, Rottendam, all that good stuff. This is not that, all right? So since then, just to give you some comparison here, I have the old one. I got from that abandoned cubit there. Since I've, uh, you can kind of see the base of that. Very similar though, uh, as far as the uh, size of the stick on the Rotterdam is a little smaller, but the, the actual knob on the top is very, very similar there. Uh, very tough to see without, there you go, you get a different view of it. But you can see where the confusion would be. And I just didn't have one to compare it to. And I started I started questioning it because like, man, that's not how I remember because I've done a Cubert Restore before. So this one had this little plate on the bottom. And I remember the Rotterdam didn't have that. It had the switches were a little different as well. So this one is a, it's called a MCA Australia. It's actually on the other side. And I'm sure earlier in the video, you saw that. I believe it's called MCA Australia. And what this one has is uh, over there, this apparently, they, these sticks came in multiple different colors. They had blue ones and green ones and yellow ones and red ones. And uh, from what I'm reading, they put them on everything. So it certainly looks passable. And I got to replace a couple of micro switches in there just to test it out. Uh, so we'll probably keep that one on. This one's going to move on to, I'm going to reuse this stick and probably this control panel too. We may make a Cubert cubes in the future. But uh, so we're going to keep this one. Now, if we can't get it to work right, Arcade Shop just released a new reproduction of the Cubert stick, a Rotterdam stick. So um, anyway, I learned something. Again, wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, and I'm still learning. So I learned that. This is just not a Cubert stick, believe it or not. I'm sure most of you were screaming at the video there, and I hope y'all watch to the end of this video to see that I figured that out all on my own without y'all <laughs> send me any comments or anything like that. So uh, it's just a learning process. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and put these translucent buttons in for those red ones there, and uh, we're getting close to finishing this up. I just wanna make sure this stick is working the right way or I'm gonna have to order that other stick. Don't really want to order it because it's $125, but uh, we'll see. Let's see if it works. Okay, so I tried to use these nice little micro switches that uh, Mike got us to fix this MCA Australia joystick here, but I still hated it. Uh, so it has this big rubber grommet, kind of like the one in the Rotterdam, but I didn't really like the way it, sh it worked. Uh, so I went ahead and sprung for the new uh, Rotterdam remake joystick that Arcade Shop is selling. So I'm gonna install that really quick. And hopefully that's the end of uh, old Cubert here. And there it is. That is the Cubert. It came out really, really good. 
Oh, we got our translucent buttons. We got our new Rotterdam joystick on there. Monitor looks good. Artwork looks good on the sides. Check out the other side. And looks really good. Knocker's working. I think that turned out really, really great. All right, we got to play a game of Cubert before we uh, move on. Just not a game, but maybe just a level of Cubert. There's some more arcade action there. I'll kick this light off here. Oh, try it again. Kick this light off so you can actually see. And uh, let me get some old uh, Cubert in here. What do you think, guys? Does this look awesome or what? I'm really excited how this turned out. So I hope y'all like this. All right, Cubert it is. Let's see what we can do. So, I want y'all be able to hear the knocker. All right, I'm gonna try to play, I'm left-handed. Let's go this way. So we're just gonna play a quick round, just first round. And I love the new joystick. It was really bothering me, that other one was. Oh my gosh. Hear that knocker, sounds great. Oh my gosh, through a tiny window. Oh yeah, we're clearing this board. Fantastic. Let's just hear Cubert die again. Ha, oh. <laughs> it's like he fell and died in the bottom of the cabinet. You gotta love that, right? Man, I think this turned out great. Mark, he looks so good. Look at that. I mean, look at the, we'll get close. Look at the little 8-bit guy. Is he 8-bit? 4-bit? I don't know what bit this would be back then. I'm guessing, uh, arcade have bits. 8-bit. Let's go 8-bit. Duh. He did. Nice. Anyway, I think it looks really, really cool. I'm excited. It came out so nice just from where it was. I just think it's a really, really good looking game. And, uh, you know, if we have uh, games in this new arcade, this is gonna be one of the coolest ones there, uh, I think. And I mean, I'm, the yellow matching is so good on this that it almost looks like it's missing here. So I just thought that was really, really good. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you so much for watching this video. This one took me a while to put together. I'm really excited it's all finished. I can move on to some other fun projects here at the Geek Pub. And uh, bye bye, Cubert. Anyway, uh, thank you so much again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And uh, if you, uh, again, if you like videos like this, which I, if you're watching, I'm guessing you do. So awesome. Congratulations, Cubert. You're our, you know, old Cubert. You're back to uh, looking decent again.